everyone, it's me, I'm back. I know it's been a long time. School's out for the summer and I've settled down, got two jobs, and I finally found some nice big chunk of time to just sit down and do a video. So, today's video is going to be about 10 things you should know before you start ballet class. This is gonna be real basic stuff, some terms and some pointers, so that when you actually get to ballet class, it's not like, totally over your head and you're totally lost. But basically overall, if you just remember that you are a beginner or maybe you're a little rusty, just remember that and be easy on yourself. First class is always gonna be a little overwhelming. But if you remember these things, it should be a little easier. All right, let's get started. By the way, if I totally butcher the pronunciations, sorry, try and work around it. I'm sure you'll get the gist of it. The way your teacher says it, go with that. posture and turnout. This is what makes it all come together. You can make just about anything <laughs> look good as long as you have good turnout and good basic posture. Turnout is basically rotation from your hips so that your feet and legs are turned out like this. You want to make sure all ten toes are on the floor, no rolling in and no rolling over your pinkies. It's better to not force your turnout and remain flat and balanced on your feet rather than forcing them out and going like that. Don't twist from your knees, don't twist from your ankles, twist from here. Tuck that butt under, forcing your legs to turn out. We're pulling up through here. You want to pull your stomach up into your rib cage and imagine there's a string at the back of your belly button pulling through to the back of your back. So you're sucking this up and in, you're pulling this up, lift that rib cage, present your chest. Shoulders back and down. Chin is going to be lifted with just a slight breath of snobbiness. Why am I always telling you pull up and in so much? Well, ballet's a lot about anti-gravity stuff. We're jumping, we're lifting legs, we're lifting arms, and all sorts of crazy stuff. So, the reason why we're pulling up, up, up all the time is because to help these guys get up there or help a whole body up in the air for jumping. If you're only, if you're slouching up here and you're making these legs work all by themselves, it's going to be a lot harder and it's going to look bad. But if you're pulled up and you're strong and you're using that core, it's like you're lifting your weight out of your feet and your legs and you're holding it where you're stronger. When you start class, you're going to want to know first position, second position, fourth position, and fifth position. I doubt you'll use third, don't worry about it for now. First position in your feet, heels together, turned out. Pretty easy. Second is just a step apart. Then you have fourth. Fourth position is where both your feet are turned out, of course, and one is in front of the other, and you simply have just under a foot of space or so in between each foot. There we have fourth. Remember to keep your weight balanced. And also keep in mind, don't roll into your arches. Really easy to do in fourth. Then we have fifth position. Put heel to toe and toe to heel. Now, I don't have perfect turnout, so I'm forcing my feet right now just so I can show you what it's supposed to look like. My turnout's more right about here. Your goal is to get your feet all the way together, but I can't do that because my turnout's not that good. Now we're going to learn about tondu. The tondu is simply pointing your foot on the ground. You're going to pull your toes back as you move them forward. So in other words, it makes sure your foot stays turned out. So your toes are still pulling back. Lead with your heel, not your toes. And then you simply point and bring it back to your original position. To the side and to the back. By the way, in ballet, front, side, and back is called devant, and then side is a la second, and back is derriere. So a dégagé is like this. Instead of doing a regular tendu, where you just point and come back, you point and come up and brush back. So it's a brushing movement, like this. Whatever you do with these tootsies, don't suckle them. 
Cycling is where your foot, when you point it, is angled from your ankle towards your big toe. The opposite of cycling is called winging it, so a lot of people say. Here's a sickled foot, here's a winged foot. The reason why we want it to be winged is because it extends the line of your leg and it's proper technique. Here's a trick. Don't overdo it, otherwise it will look bad, but especially it works good in attitude. So what you actually do to get it to wing a little bit is slightly flex it, point and then flex a little and just move it toward your pinky toe. You see that? That's the way to do it. Next we have the plie. The plie is basically the bending of the legs. A demi plie is a plie that goes down to the point where your heels are just about to come off the floor. But keep them on the floor. That's the whole point of it being a demi plie. A grand plie is where you go all the way down to the ground. But don't sink, keep pulled up. So a grand plie in first position is going to look like this. We're not sitting on our legs. We're still keeping pulled up and squeezing through here, and then we come up and finish. So, once again, a grand plie. Second position is the only position where your heels don't come off the floor in a grand plie. A grand plie is gonna go down to the base, keeping pulled up, turned out, oh, knees over toes, and coming up. Don't do this. Even when you're going down, we still want to think up. That way we're staying lifted and pulled out of these legs. A quick bit about your fingers and arms. Basically, as long as you keep your shoulders down and your thumbs tucked in, you'll be good. But here's a little bit more. There's going to be two positions that your fingers or your hands will be in. One is an arabesque and then one that's where your arm's rounded. So when you're here, you wanna create like, like steps. Imagine someone's trying to get from here to here and you kind of fan out your fingers so that there's like, it's cascading, so to speak. When you're here, it's like you're just brushing your fingers open like that. Now, for arms, oh, there's a few basic positions. Here we have first, it's like you're holding a beach ball below your heart. Don't let your arms get up too high, otherwise you kind of close yourself in. Second position is where our arms are open out to the side. Some people have you round up like this more. Some like a more straight. Depends on the teacher, but as long as you know that your arms out to the side is second, you'll be good. Your teacher will correct the finite details. Then we have high fifth. High fifth is where our arms go up above our heads. This is a tricky one because when you put your arms up here, your first instinct, if you're trying to be taller, is to pull your shoulders up so your arms can go higher. Don't do that. Keep your shoulders down. It's possible to lift your arms up and push your shoulders down at the same time. For example, here we have high fifth. Shoulders up, shoulders back and down. Keep those fingers fanned out. Keep those thumbs tucked in. Don't block your face. Then we have arabesque. Arabesque is gonna be out in front of you like this with a straight arm. Don't let it be like directly straight out and don't let it droop. It's gonna come up just a tiny bit. Fingers fan, thumbs tucked in, shoulders back and down. Now we're gonna go over elevé, relevé, terms that have to do with things being off the ground. Elevé, is where you simply press up, pulling up through here, you press up to what's called a demi point. Releve is when you plie and then press up. The rond de jambe is where you complete a circular motion, hitting front, devant, side, à l'escon, and back, derrière. Here is our basic rond de jambe on the ground, which is front, side, back. That's your basic rond de jambe. Now we have coupé. We have front coupé, back coupé, and a coupé that's 
wrapped around your ankle, which is called serre la de coup de pied. To the front, our coupe is going to look like this. It's simply pointing your foot and holding your toes right here by your ankle. And to the back, it looks like this. If your whole foot's against your ankle, you're circling. Keep it winged. That's your back coupe. Sail out of coup de pied is where you wrap your foot around your ankle. So your heel should be in front and your toes should be to the back. That's a wrap. <laughs> that's about it for today. There's so much more I could go over, but that's the reason why you're going to class. You'll learn everything in a much more detailed manner. You'll do great. It's going to be so much fun. Ballet is the ultimate combination of grace and strength. Interesting, because when you're trying to be super flowy and graceful, you don't like necessarily think, oh, this is such a strong movement. But in reality, ballet is all about making things that are extremely strong look super graceful and like there's nothing that could be easier. So remember, it's supposed to be difficult, but you can do it. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.